Welcome to the RepSites Family Program with your host, Pastor Veronica Nongo. Join us every Thursday at 5 p.m. as we dive into the hearts of marriage and family life. Brought to you by the Agape Marriage Ministry. Our mission is to strengthen your relationships and prepare you for the times ahead with a focus on being rapture ready. Stay tuned for inspiring discussions and practical advice on nurturing a godly family. Hello and welcome to the Respite Family Program. Thank you very much for your time again with us on this journey. How is it with you? This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. As I always say, yes, that's his word for us, for his people. Now, I have been taking a series on the purpose of marriage. The purpose of marriage. And I have, you know, broken them down into three major areas of the physical, psychological, and also the spiritual. I'll just quickly do um, a quick recap. But before then, I'll just take a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because you are the teacher. You are our God. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us, using me as your vessel to show us the right thing to do or to know, to help us to know that which is right concerning marriage. Thank you, King of Glory. I turn over this teaching to you, Lord. Have your way in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Yes, I talked about these three aspects and the first one had to do with the physical and they are broken into companionship, complementary companionship, male and female. You have a lifelong partner. That's God's purpose for marriage. And then when you have this relationship, you can you are free to engage in sexual um, relations as a couple, as a married couple. That's God's perfect will. And from this, you also have the fruit. And then that's procreation. Children are born. That's God's pattern, God's natural order. Why was this? This was put in place because Jesus needed to come to the world to be born. You know, down the generations from Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel and down, down, down until you got to the time of Mary and Joseph. What happened? The Lord himself, he wasn't born of a human, please, but he had to take on flesh and came through the Virgin Mary. So he was born into this world. He came to save me, to save you, to save the whole world, to save all who call upon him. So that's the physical aspect of marriage. In case you are just, you know, tuning in for the first time, I'm just doing a quick wrap up. God decided that yes, in this marriage, he says it's not good for the man to be alone. And so he made him a help meet for him, an appropriate partner, a companion for life. And this companion, they move together in a committed lifelong relationship. And then they are to reproduce their kind. And then through this lineage, so to say, if I can use that um, phrase, the Lord himself made his appearance on earth. He came. Now the second aspect has to do with the psychological aspect of marriage. The purpose of marriage, the psychological aspect. When you have a, a person, you know a lot of people are, uh, how do I say it? A lot of people are lonely. These days, they are lonely, no partner. Or they have someone and they are not flowing. But God has it that this partner of yours, a covenant partner, it's a covenant relationship. And so in that covenant relationship, if you read um, Genesis 2, 24 and 25, you get this, you know, it all. But in, I'm zeroing into verse 25 now. In verse 25, because you have this covenant partner with you, there's openness, there's sincerity, there's love, there's vulnerability. You can open up and tell him, your husband or your wife, oh, this is where I have this, this pain, or this is, this is my hope, this is my desire. You can be open to each other, mentally, emotionally, physically, all round. So, and in this atmosphere, you have, 
love, you have unity, and from love we have, you know, physical love, the physical um, um, intimacy between a man and his wife. There's also romantic love, and then there's agape love. And in Ephesians 5, from 22 to 33 of Ephesians 5, there's a summary of the two major things that if any couple should engage in, they would satisfy each other's emotional needs. Their mental health will be healthy. The man, for example, he cares for, 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 for him. How do I say it? It's a gender related or gender based need. For the man, one of the needs, the first one is respect. And when he has a wife who respects him, of course, he's bound to love her. And he has a wife who is submissive. There will be a flow. And vice versa, if the woman also is loved by her husband, as the church is loved by Christ sacrificially, when the woman is loved that way, she will, she will, she will enjoy the marriage. Submission will come easy for her. So both of them will enjoy each other. I have taken, you know, some teaching concerning this previously. I'm just doing a summary of this. So when there is love and there's submission, then both of them meet each other's needs and there's um, emotional and mental satisfaction. You, you trust each other, you love each other, you're united. And so your mental health won't be an issue because you are flowing. There's, no, there's trust in that relationship. Now, moving forward, today I'm focusing on the spiritual aspect of the purpose of marriage, the reason. The psych the, I've, I've talked about physical, I've talked about psychological, now is the spiritual aspect of the marriage relationship. Why do we need this? God imputes this in the purpose of marriage so as to do what? To help mature the couples. A husband and wife, they don't come from the same um, environment. They have different family or growing up experience, different experience of life. And then they are coming together. They are different gender. One is male, one is female. And we know that the man thinks differently from the woman. She responds differently from the man and so on and so forth. They are coming together. And not only coming together, they have temperament, not the same. And then they come together in this relationship of oneness. What do you think will happen? They are bound to step on each other's toes. And that's why a lot of people say, marriage is hard, marriage is hard, marriage is hard. Well, you just have to endure. Well, I'm here to tell you that you do not have to endure marriage. You can enjoy marriage. As long as you follow God's purpose and his will. Now we're talking about the purpose of marriage. And the spiritual aspect is my focus now. Because people have various reasons for entry into the marital relationship. But we're talking about God's own purpose now. And then when you come together in this uh, relationship, like I said earlier, you are bound to step on each other's toes. Now I have the book I wrote, The Mystery of Marriage Unraveled. I'm going to just um, quickly read a portion to you here on this aspect of you, of a, a couple, you know, like literally stepping on each other's toes. Marriage is a means of a couple serving each other in love and mutually serving God. Husband serves wife, wife serves husband, and together they serve their father, God. Now, the effect of this the effect of this unity between a married couple works for their good. They are two imperfect persons shackled together, so to speak, to this lifelong commitment in their strengths and in their weaknesses, agreeing to be the best and do the best for each other 
in their union. And so marriage brings the best and the worst out of each other. Marriage brings what? The best and the worst out of each other. So in this situation, you learn love. You learn to be patient. You learn to forbear. Do you, do you get? So you will not react or respond according to her. Mm -mm. As long as you follow God's ways. In marriage, forgiveness serves like an eraser. You know, when children are learning to write, they use the pencil and they just scribble all over the page. It's easy to take the, uh, the eraser and erase what has been scribbled. And that page is clean. And she can, or he or she can rewrite. Or is making a sentence or trying to make spell something and spells it wrongly. Erase and can do it the right, the right way. So is forgiveness in marriage. So is forgiveness in the marital relationship. And as you learn to forgive each other, you grow. You grow. You grow. I'll take some more of that. As grapes are crushed and ground to produce wine, which gives joy and gladness, this situation makes them grow emotionally and spiritually. They mature their Christian character through the grinding and refining process as they go through life's joys, pains, and challenges as they live together. As their character develops, they bear the fruit of the Spirit, becoming more Christ-like with the years. This process of refining, of maturity, of growth, brings glory to God. In a home where the husband is growing, the wife is growing, of course, they will learn to understand each other the better. And they become more mature, they become more patient. Of course, when you pray in that kind of atmosphere, what do you think will happen? Of course, God will hear the prayer. God will answer the prayer. Now, the another reason, spiritual, showcases God's love for humanity and Christ's love for the church. God loved us so much that he gave us Jesus. Before the appearance of Jesus, God had a relationship with the chosen people, the, Israel, the, the, the Israelites. And if you are used to the Bible, you know how he took them, he cared for them, pampered them, of course, punished them or disciplined them. And until Jesus now came, we are now in the period of grace. So this reason is for the married couple to show forth the love of God in their relationship so that people will now see and say, ah, truly, they're a Christian family, truly, they're children of God. And then the ultimate spiritual reason is this. What is it? The manifestation of God's kingdom on earth. How this comes to the creating of his family, God's family on earth. I'm going to take another um, portion for you here. The phrase children of God tells us that God is creating his own family, spiritual family. So when the Lord, you know, made marriage, part of the purpose is as we have the physical family on earth, God also has his own spiritual family. His plan and purpose is to bring many sons unto glory, as stated in Hebrews and in Ephesians. Now, I'm going to read that for you. In Ephesians 3, verses 14 to 15, it says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. He is our Father, the Father of the spiritual family. He has his family in heaven, his family on earth, oneness, his kingdom above. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. One family. So God is building up his family. 
And Hebrews 2, 10 and 11 says, In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. And verse 11, both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. So God is building up his family on earth. When people get saved, when people get born again, they become members of the body of Christ and so a family of God. So that's the spiritual reason for marriage. All right? So, a quick one now. Maturing the couple brings what? The fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, you know? It comes from a couple that are truly, truly growing and maturing. And then it shows the love of God for man and the love of Christ for the church. And then the manifestation of God's kingdom here on earth as he creates the family. So, as we have covered these three aspects, I just want to take another um, portion of the reading from the book. It will do you well to please try and get this book, The Mystery of Marriage. All right? You will hear about it and get you get a copy for yourself. Okay. Um, okay, from here it says the human families are a type of the spiritual family. God's ultimate purpose is to get godly offsprings. So that's why when you get born again, it's expected that you will grow and you will become God's own child. You will grow and bring forth good fruits. God's kingdom is free spread on earth. So God's ultimate purpose is to get godly offspring that will have his spiritual nature when they receive Christ. They will live eternally with him as they live in him and for him. Having believing families here on earth means they are representing Christ and ushering in his kingdom. Please note that marriage here on earth is penultimate. It has an end. So you must consider your reason for wanting to get married. At the same time, marriage has eternal values. Marriage came from God and couples live in him and for him. Therefore, they should consider the ultimate marriage union, the bridegroom's wedding to the bride. Will you be ready? Will you be a part of that? Revelation 19, 6 to 8 talks about the wedding. So, the wedding of the lamb to the bride. Now, having talked about the spiritual aspect of marriage, I, you know, in fact, talk, starting from the beginning now, the physical, the psychological, and the spiritual. While having these various reasons for marriage, please realize that the focus should be, your focus should be on the Lord. The satisfaction of fulfillment of personal needs like parenthood, financial or emotional security through the provision of material or companionship needs should never supersede the reality of living for Christ and loving like Christ. And so that's why for couples who don't have children, you will not say because you don't have children, you will not be here, you will not um, serve the Lord anymore, you fall away from faith. And no, God will do it for you. But while you are doing it, let your focus be on the Lord. And if God has blessed you with children, don't let the children become your God. Don't let the material things you have, money, Cars, education, wealth, whatever. Mm -mm. The focus should be the Lord Himself, the Lord Jesus Christ. And please be aware that lack or abundance should never be a cause of deviation from the path of 
righteousness. Couples should run homes with godly values. Everyone ought to be living for Christ while eagerly watching and waiting for his return. This longing for the master helps one to be eternity conscious and not focus on mundane purposes. The Lord himself gave a dare warning in Luke 21 to not allow anything to take our hearts away from the real focus. Focus, sorry. He unfolded his love to enclose us to be a part of him. It is not about us, our gifts, our talents, experiences, wealth, knowledge, etc. Rather, all that has to do with his divine purpose. So be prepared and be alert at all times. If you are single, what's your reason for getting married? Please, if you have not been following me, take out time to take out the teachings, to listen to the teachings on the reason, the reasons for marriage, God's reasons for marriage. It's spiritual, it's physical, it's psychological, all packaged in the marriage covenant. So when you go through that, you now check, I'm getting married. For no, it must be for these reasons and not just for any other reason. At this point, I want to say, for the single ones who want to marry, I pray for you that you have the right partner. You get the right person as your partner for marriage for life. And if you are married, I pray for you that your marriage be stable and you know that truly uh, this marriage is not just all about me, but about us showing forth the glory of God. Hallelujah. Can we pray, please? Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you. Your word has gone forth. Thank you for your children. As they hear, help them to readjust what needs to be readjusted. And is there any who doesn't know Jesus as Savior and Lord at this point? I would encourage you to please let him be your Lord, let him be your Savior, so that you will get married not only on earth here, so you'll be a part of the people who will be on, in heaven and who will be a part of that marriage that's going to take place in heaven with the Lord Jesus. Don't just get married here and that it ends here. So if you want Jesus as Savior and Lord, just say after me, Lord Jesus, I come before you. Have mercy upon me. I'm a sinner. I believe you died for me and you rose again. Come into my life. Come and take your place. Have mercy. I believe you are coming again. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'll pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for that one who is saying, Lord, I want you. And your word says you will in no wise cast out any who comes to you. Thank you for saving. Thank you for delivering. Thank you for making them your own. Thank you for writing their name in the book of life. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. So, please, this same time next week, by the grace of God, join me as we talk, take another aspect of family life, of marriage, and if you have any questions, please feel free to send your WhatsApp message to this number 0707 and 068 8448 0707 068 8448. God bless you and have a beautiful time. Till this time, God willing, next week. Bye for now. <laughs> Thanks a million for staying with us on the Respite Family Program. We hope you've been highly blessed and encouraged. For more enriching content, 
follow Pastor Veronica Nogo on Facebook and visit our ministry page at Agape Marriage Ministry. Now discover the mystery of marriage unraveled by Veronica Nogo in Kindle, paperback and hardcover. So don't miss the power couple available in paperback and e-copy. Other must reads available in e-copy include The Clarion Call for Men, Why God Created the Woman, How to Plan a Stress-Free Wedding, Your Guide and more. Connect with us on YouTube by emailing us at Agape Marriage Ministry International at gmail.com. Visit our website at https forward slash at agape marriage ministry .org. For more information, you can also reach us via email at info at agape marriage ministry .org. God bless you.